Hello, Steve. Hello, Jill. It's time to game classy. And now we are recording. Hey, all right. Yeah. Sorry about that. I can only do recording on my premium Google account. Oh. I was not on my premium account. Oh, what the fuck is a premium Google account? It gives you it's like a business account. And so you get like stuff like uh, Google Meets, like recording for free and shit or not for uh, free, but you pay for it. Right, 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 right. I'm, it's basically through my work email. Let's just be fair. All right, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, we got we got a lots to talk about. Lots lots do, of tabletop stuff to talk about. Do, do do we? Do we actually? Yeah, I mean, they showed all of the new Age of Sigmar shit. They did. It's very they cool. Did. Very exciting. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We are a gaming podcast. We probably should talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we should. I mean, like we're tangentially gaming con uh podcast. I like that whenever I see anyone talk about game classy in the wild like which really makes me happy when i see it oh yeah they're always just like oh yeah this is a great podcast now they don't always talk about gaming (laughs) (laughs) the part that drives me nuts about that though is that people legit will listen to a one-hour podcast about gaming and i'm like that's got to be miserable i don't know man yeah i don't get the uh into the nitty-gritty it doesn't make any sense to me um, yeah, that that like, like a, aut- that autist level of a hyper focus on. Yeah, on- I don't I don't have it. I understand it. I just don't have it. I mean, I I really don't understand it either. Like, uh, I'm, you don't well, understand I hyper fixation. No, I can understand someone being hyper fixated, but I can't understand someone wanting to listen to someone be hyper fixated because they're also hyper fixated. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're, you're just the, the, the dude who the, the dude who wrote the Knuckles, sto- the Knuckles novel uh, had like sold it. He made money like there. That's a thing. <laughs> I, you probably don't know who the Knuckles novel guy is, but just to give you an idea without going too deep into it, uh, this author is his. And this is not like an insult. He's like the, the most autistic person I've ever seen. And his, he's his writing is when he says a color he then puts in parentheses the hexadecimal code for the color yeah there you so go he says, so he says the, the wall was painted white parentheses f f f f f parentheses like <laughs> and that book sold people bought it so that's that's why that that should answer your the, the hyperfixation thing <laughs> i don't know if they sold it to actually read it or sold it just to be like like see what it was it is it is it is curious I it's will like, say that it, it it reads like a tech manual, like like I because I've read I've read a little bit of it because like you know I had I had to I was so fucking curious, but it it really does it kind of reads like someone put uh programming for a video game plus rules for an RPG plus a fan fiction novel, like they 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 combined those things like that's how it's written. So like when a character uses an attack like the damage is listed like it's a number like it's it's very strange yeah so you, i i don't know if like internet fandom understands that normies look at us like freak shows in the 1920s hey like, you're right google yeah, like, gobble google gobble <laughs> one of us one of us like legit that sounds like two bits of gander right there um yeah like come see the freak to give his sonic fan fiction two bits yeah of yeah gander. yeah no that that one's definitely a two bits of gander for sure yeah uh, yeah it's it's but this, so there you go so that's why people want that's why people want to listen to something like, uh where someone just talks uh about uh you know their, their stats and their roles very intricately They're like I, I don't mind a little bit of detail but you know don't there was there was a there was a uh, podcast where they i was i started listening to it and then they got into like the number of attacks that hit and missed and stuff and i was like okay i'm done yeah i i like i i enjoy doing that more in person like if i'm if i'm talking about like nitty-gritty stats of a game i'm gonna be sitting there talking to a person saying well you only got like a 15 percent chance of actually hitting and wounding here because if you take this with you know it's one sixth of a chance of a hit but then you have to multiply it by this and that gives you a one in 36 chance you know i'll do that in person but listening to that it's miserable yeah you know what that is that's a math lecture and i don't need math lecture do you need a math lecture uh no i don't i i I hate math (laughs) i don't want to hear anything about math actually the older i get the more i like math because it's like 
you know, when the when your math teacher's like, math is the only one where the answer is, just, you know, there actually is a right answer. And it's, you know, I appreciate that more than I'm older and I don't have to deal with, like, English major bullshit. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't like the, English either, but I just don't, I don't like math the most. The shades of gray. <laughs> um, yeah, let's let's talk about the new Games Workshop drops uh, or previews, and then we'll go into a little bit of the dramas that are going on across the Internet. Because there are a couple fun dramas that are fun to talk about. Look and point at and laugh and say, how is this affecting your life? Are you this sad of a person that it is affecting your life? Nice. I've, oh, got, I, I've got a cool Kickstarter to talk about. And, and is it the is it the one with the AI art and NFT? No, no, that's the drama one. I assumed that was what you were talking. One about. of the drama ones. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, that's not that's not it at all. So it's just you just want to put a meme that meme out for most of these people that just is just the guy pointing to grass. You know. Yes. <laughs> uh but anyway uh so yes sure about a week after we did our last podcast they did the preview for the age of sigmar skaven tide box set yes. um it, it is called skaven tide uh why yes. did they not call it vermin tide steve why did they not call it vermin tide uh honestly it's probably because they would have to pay the company that made vermin tide a uh, licensing know, right for that probably not games workshop probably owns vermin tide I don't know about that because because with I because with IP Vermintide would be licensed. So unless Games Workshop specifically said your game is called Vermintide and that's our that like the title of Vermintide would be owned by the proprietor who made that. But they couldn't use it unless they also renewed their licensed IP. But they but it goes both ways. So like Warhammer is Games Workshop and they're paying to use the word Warhammer. And then they added their own word, which is Vermintide. And I believe it would go the opposite. If War, if Warhammer wanted to use Vermintide, they would have to pay vermintide i believe that is how that would work out for licensing i i i, I will cast doubt on that and, however uh, uh because i don't know if i don't know if you could if, if vermintide is actually trademarked uh, yeah i mean it's it might be I'm, I'm just assuming games workshop has taken every two words possible and trademarked them at this point every two word grimdark fantasy words that you could think of yes yes i don't know because vermintide might be a trademarked word that 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 the company is using Yes, that's that's kind of what I'm assuming. But anyway, we get to finally see the Skaven and Stormcast Eternals that are in the box set. Oh man, what a fucking box set! Um, it is interesting. I am as I think I have texted you. I'm just waiting to see the price to see if it's worth it. Yes. Um, the Skaven are let's let's well let's talk about the the Stormcast first. The Stormcast are pretty much just re uh re sculpts of the original box set with the exception of the dudes with the axes the the um whatever the reclusians is that what they're called the reclusians yeah yeah so they're they're all new versions of previously existing unit choices yes so i really so the liberators are just uh you know re uh re sculpted you get your your two hammer versions and you get your hammer shield version Mm -hmm. um, which are pretty sweet. I think you get uh, one unit of five of each, or I don't know if they're if you can like swap out the hammers with the shields, but I know that you could. There's five of each. Um, they got new prosecutors, which are the the flying dudes. Yeah, that uh, they have the shield and the spear, which was not in the original op, which was not an option in the original box set. I believe the original box set had two hammers only. No, they had ja they had javelins. They had javelins and spears. They did in the, um, in the uh, uh, in the box that you would buy separate from the original box set. In the original yes. box set, they only came with two hammers. Yes, and the other one had the javelins and spears, and it was. I remember it was annoying because if I remember correctly, the javelins and spears were way better and they were harder. Way to get. better. Yeah. So you had to legit buy like back then the bits trade for games workshop was still going strong so it was not that hard to buy those options on ebay but still you had to do it right it was like a, it was like an extra hassle uh yeah. but you yeah, know the, the liberators look really cool uh i i'm very very excited about it i i think i think everything in the box looks just fucking incredible i mean i love the new sculpts i love the the fucking lord terminos has such a fucking frank Fazetta Frazetta ass pose like i just love that <laughs> yeah that's um, very uh very very rackham as i like to say yeah yeah i mean R R rackham's i mean rackham's kind of that 
what is that like fantasy genre that like Frazetta and uh, at Rackham would kind of I fall just under? call it grimdark I mean Grim- really is it grimdark? yeah okay yeah well yeah it's just a very grimdark pose it's very cool uh I love it I think it's awesome <laughs> well um, yeah I like the little dude that comes with them oh yeah he's great he's I, li- I like that he is a fake sword yes it's, it's a he, fake sword it's just sconces instead of a blade <laughs> well I think that's like a uh um What's it called? Like a like a scale, but it's got flames with it. So I don't really understand what he's trying to measure. Whatever well, he's going to no, measure is going to burn up. The, Come on, the, man, think about it. I, I will see. I'm okay. So I look at it as a sword as a sword hilt that has no blade, and attached to the hilt, there's two flaming sconces. Oh, okay. See, no, I saw it as a. Uh, well, I could. Yeah, I think it looks a little bit more like that than what I was thinking, which is just like a um, scale. You were, yeah, you were thinking like the truth and justice scale. Yes. Um. And also the Lord Veritant, I I do like the detail of him wearing the blindfold. However, I will say this, although it looks cool, that's going to be such a bitch to paint. Uh, I'm sure he has a helmet version, though. You can just slap the helmet version. I mean, he he (laughs) probably could. I'm just saying that it looks like it'll be like a blindfold like that looks cool in theory but in actual practice painting that is going to be miserable i'm i'm fuck, i'm so stoked i'm very i'm very much looking forward to it yeah. i also really like the night quester he's just this fucking dynamic ass pose he's got a fucking torch not enough models hold torches anymore <laughs> well it's because you it's hard to paint fire you're not wrong you're not wrong but you can always cheat by just making it not look like fire and just make it just be like no it's magic no, or you, you know, could just cut it off and give him another sword also true yeah, but I mean, I, I I go with I use the you know you could just use the um just use the fucking GW uh, blue or green ghost ghost paint and Ooh. then just uh that, it should actually looks pretty fucking good and it's pretty cheesy easy it, it, ghost paint ghost paint yeah I mean, it works you just you just yeah. you throw the ghost paint on it then hit it with a little uh, little gray highlight and you're good yeah see I'm liking on the stormcast side I like all of the like non stormcast shit like how the reclusians have like those little dudes that follow them like i like those little dudes more than i like anything oh else. The, the little dudes are awesome i i, I think i i really like that aesthetic for this for this chamber like i think that's yeah. very cool and, and, and i believe the idea is um the, so the reclusians these are the, the reason these guys look like that and the reason they're so extra grimdark is because these are the fucking stormcast that are like very close to becoming robots uh, Robot. yes uh they really like uh some daft punk so they they're they're very upset that Daft Punk is still broken up. Yeah. Um. But yeah. No. I think they I think they look dope. I think they look very cool. Uh, I like that they gave the liberators, and it makes sense that like the liberators being retired and then very swiftly unretired. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, um, I like I and I like um. I even like the paint jobs that they did with them. I'm not gonna go with the with the the kind of metallic like it is like they did it, but I do like the paint job that they did very well. I, I like that there's a contrast between the blue metal that they did on the plates and kind of like almost a rusty metal that they did on the chain mail parts. Yeah, like you I think could, that's you the... Could legit hammer... see the differences in the in the hues, which I like. That's that's not Hammers of Sigmar. Hammers of Sigmar is the gold guys. Um, I can't remember what the fucking yeah. metallic guys are, but they're, they're, they're the second most popular chamber. They have the they, they have the special character. They're in the the Wardens of the Ever Queen uh, storyline. Oh. Uh, they're they're very, they're very cool. That, that's a that's a good yeah. That's a good story. If if anyone hasn't listened to the like the first batch of Age of Sigmar lore, it's actually pretty fucking good. They do they do some really they do some really cool stuff. Yeah. What a lore. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, lore. It's just it's fucking it's disposable entertainment. That's that's what lore means. Yes, and I also like that's not what lore means at all. <laughs> it is it is what lore means. When so when anyone's talking to me about lore of something, I'm thinking this is the most disposable part of this of this entertainment. <laughs> and I also like the new redesign on the um, the demi griffs because I like that they're they're shaggy now. Yeah, very cool. Yes. uh long hair i also the the mounted dude is cool as well uh with the the fucking big ass axe on the griff stalker yes that big weird griffin looking thing the lord cool. vigilant yes vigilant vigilante yeah, so i like that and then we get to the skaven part which is um what i'm like truly interested in oh the skaven part's g- gorgeous as well um yeah you get and remember i was talking about on the previous cast is like it's all going to depend on the number of skaven clan rats you get like it's mm-hmm. gonna make it worthwhile. So, in the end, it turns out you're getting about forty clan rats, which is perfect. Yes. Like yeah. Okay. So, for those who who know or don't know, in the old world, forty clan rats is pretty good for a starter army. Yeah. That's um, like that, you want that big block of clan rats as your base. Well, in the actuality, in the old world, you'd probably want like 
I mean, okay, it depends on how you're playing. If you're playing like cheesy meta, you're going to want like a block of 40. If you're playing like just standard, 22 blocks of 20 is not bad. Oh, two, bucks game. two bucks 20 is fine you can make your big yeah. block storm room and, i mean if you're playing super cheese you don't want any clarinets you want the fucking 80 man blocks of slaves <laughs> but you know, but you know what don't do that just just yeah. just just make just make a cool looking army I how mean, about that seriously the more i'm reading like people playing like the old world competitively the more i want to take their heads and just smash them on side on cement just take it just heads and just smash it and go what is wrong with you why can't you just play the game for fun <laughs> that, like, that, i mean that's i mean they can they can have it that's why that's why i mean m many other reasons but one of the reasons i wouldn't go to a tournament again is just oh I, don't, I don't need God. it <laughs> just hearing people say like Oh, I can't do that. That's not cost effective. I'm just like, shut the fuck up. I mean, do it's cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't condone like I, I, I think the best place to be is either whatever you want to call it. You can call it semi-casual or semi-competitive, whatever you want to call that uh, degree of gameplay. And I think, I, I think I might be repeating myself from like the last cast, but like I think, I think that's that's really what where you want to be because you don't want to be because because if, if you're too casual then what's the fucking point why you're why are you bothering to even play the game and then yeah. if, you're too, if you're too competitive it's like bro fucking calm down like like don't you you, you don't need to take it to like I, like the, like that level of the, the intensity is like not for like there is not money on the line that yeah would I, I, take that. I think it's like competitive without being a dick is kind of the level that we're all looking at at this point yeah yeah and then you know and i understand like obviously you don't want to bring like a fucking shit tier army like to the thing just like just like you're not going to intentionally make your army terrible just because but yeah. I, I but you can make it cool like put a, put a little bit of thought into it make it cool paint it up you know what if you're not doing great that's fine you just paint up a second army and then find someone to play with at home <laughs> right i mean that, that also works but i and actually the uh, speaking of army and assembling and you were just talking about content i was looking at and thinking that i i believe and i might be wrong but i believe skaven tide is the first box set that i've seen that looks literally built to buy multiple copies of optimally because this you actually brought it up specifically with the liberators uh because i don't think the 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 those are you're gonna get the ability to build those either way so you're gonna get a five man unit of hammer shield and a five man unit of twin hammer twin hammer now that's not a combat that's not a compatible group of models you cannot field a 10 man unit of liberators with that because you can't mix their equipment yeah. but if you buy another box set you have a 10 man unit of hammer and shield and a 10 man unit of double hammers and everything looks to be, like other than the characters the stuff really looks like you're gonna be able to multiply it like that i mean maybe and plus with a like a double set of the skaven would be more than enough skaven than you'd ever need oh yeah they, absolutely yeah they uh they also you also get three uh uh skaven ogres or rat ogres which are the first time that you're actually getting really decent plastic rat ogres like in, in, a, in the unit size that you need because one of the big complaints about island of blood is you only got two rat ogres and like you need minimum three in any case and then actually in old world rat ogres are not great but you should probably if you're gonna field them you want six yes and and of course the funniest part about that is even in the edition they released two was if i believe two was not a legal unit i think you had to field at least three to, Maybe, to bring yeah. a unit in, to bring a unit in warhammer i think there were a three plus size unit i never played skaven in eighth so i don't know yeah i didn't either so that's that's why I, that's why i've top like if it was sixth i know for a fact three was the minimum yeah I, I do know that in sixth edition i believe three was the minimum or it might have been two with a pack master Yes, um, that, that that's that's still a three man unit though, which you you wouldn't have three models to do if you got the Island of Blood set. Yeah, you would. You there was a pack master in there. Oh, was there? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you get the three in there. The three really nice models. You get the rattling warp blaster, which is kind of a fun little little bicycle it looks, thing. It looks great. It looks really fun. I love that. I love that it has it's just. I I love the Skaven design of like dudes just pushing shit. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you on that one. It's it's so it's 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 very I I don't charming is the word I would use for it. <laughs> it's very charming. No, it's uh, very charming. And you also yeah. get th three Gisales, which are in plastic for the first time, and they look fucking great. Yeah, they look awesome. They look real good. Yeah, no, I'm very I'm very excited about this box set. So hypothetically, let's say that you buy your box set and you trade someone your Stormcast for their Skaven. So you have two Skaven armies at that point. You'd have 80 Clan Rats, six Gisales. 
six rat ogres. That's like more than enough for a decent the old world army if you wanted to do it for the old world. And two warp blasters, which you could just use as um uh lightning cannons. Yeah, you could use those as lightning cannons or um what are you could use them as a uh what are what are the support weapons called? I can't remember. They'd have the the kind of thing. I there'll be be a little big for that, but Oh, they'd be, they'd be, I think they'd be a little too big for the warp fire thrower. Warp fire thrower, yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, because warp fire thrower is a cavalry, is a cavalry base, and there's no way that thing is small enough to fit in a cavalry base. You're probably right. But then you get the, they also have the claw lord on the gnaw beast, and it, I, I think the gnaw beast looks a little too emaciated, but it's still a pretty cool model. Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, I have the old, um, do you remember the old clan pestilence character on the, the rat? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude on the rat. Yes, I do. I fucking love that figure. It's one of my favorite figures of all time. He's a um, great figure. God, what was his name? His name was like uh, Lord Festus or some stupid shit like that. Mm. But I <laughs> love that figure. He's that the entire Lustra campaign was a complete wet fart from Games Workshop, but that figure was so good. Yeah, they they kind of they kind of blew blew that campaign, huh? Which it's it, I mean, well, I mean, maybe 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 it wasn't the fact that that campaign was bad, but that was the follow up to um, Storm, of Chaos. Storm of Chaos, which is like, how are you gonna how are you gonna follow that up? Yeah, it's like, well, we have this book, and you could play like one of three armies in it, and everyone was kind of like, oh, and they were like the three, like I shouldn't say three least popular because Skaven are always kind of popular. And lizard men are always kind of popular. Lizard men are always popular, despite my belief that lizard men are popular. <laughs> mm. Like I'm always just like lizard men. No one plays lizard men, and then people do like playing lizard men. This is true, but it's it's kind of like when I was talking when I talk about like fetish porn, where it's like, you know, you see all of like you see these people constantly begging for like, could you do this as a big titty dragon lady? And you're just like, who wants a big titty dragon lady? But. Oh, I, I guess this guy does, but it's like you see enough people asking for big titty, titty dragon ladies that you're like, oh, this must be a thing. Yeah, when are when are they doing the Skaven Broodmother model? <laughs> give, that's give that's me, true. I'm, I'm sure there's be enough people asking for that. Give me the Broodmother. <laughs> but that's actually, but actually, that's the most interesting thing that I'm I'm liking out of this is that if they are doing Skaven, um, I'd like to see the add-on units that they actually put out for it in this new edition. Like, will they be doing new? Um, uh, what are the clan pestilence guys? The 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 monks. The, the didn't, they get, monks. didn't plague monks get pulled from the uh, roster? I thought they were one of the retired models. They are, but are they doing new ones? Oh, uh, like are they are they removing them completely from the game, or are they doing new yeah. new sculpts? Are they going to do new plastic clan uh gutter runners? Like that's the shit that I'm interested in seeing because mm, yeah, I no. would. I would love to see an army of ninja rats, right? True, and with true. Shogun being on the, the tube, it would be uh, apropos at this time to do is, a Japanese. Is, is that show? Is that show any good? I hear everyone's talking about it. You would absolutely fucking love it because right. it's all in Japanese. It's it's subtitled. The entire thing is subtitled. Oh, sick! All right. Well, except for a few parts where they're talking English, but the vast way, like if it's a Japanese character, they're speaking Japanese. That's that's fine. It can be it can be like my it can be like one of my tutors where we we talk in mostly Japanese, but then sometimes we randomly go into English. Yeah, and then uh, um, then you could play the new Assassin's Creed, which is all in Japan, and you could get upset that there is a black character like every other chud on the internet. Why would I be upset about that? There's literally I, a very extremely notable black samurai. I know. I'm just. <laughs> Just, oh, I mean, I mean, do do really do really people do, are people really upset about that? Do they not know who Yasuke is? Like, is that? A I thing? mean, like, no, people just like to be upset about things. Ah, okay, very good. Yes, the the show well, that's going to go into one of my uh, vast pro uh, internet uh, throwing your hands up and getting angry moments from mm -hmm. for people. Um, but yes, so that's that's kind of the release for the new AOS, and they did announce something that I wanted to touch on, which is the. Um, what is that mode called? The uh, Spe oh, spearhead. Uh, spearhead, spearhead, which yes. basically is um, Age of Sigmar on a board. Yep. From what I what I'm hearing, it's it's basically I'm playing AOS, but it's board game style. Yes, it's a it's a smaller, faster version of the game, and that's what that that's what they're launching in uh, the starter set for you to play. Like, so they're actually you're going to have an actual playable starter set. Yeah, so what it looks like is it you get it's a double-sided board 
that's uh that's kind of like the size of the standard board that you use for like Warcry or Necromunda or any of the other you know smaller games that we talked about on the previous casts. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you just play on that board, like that's it. And there's like some cards that you play. Um, I didn't look too deep into it, but yeah, you get like a like a deck of cards, and there's like things that are on the cards, and it's it's just a small fast way of playing AOS. And you get the, the 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 sweet rulers, the three the three inches that snap into six inches, and then mm. also that that board has the fucking objectives uh, built on it. Like yeah, it, it's it. printed on the board, which is awesome. Yeah, and then they have um, I like snap the six incher. Um, Hell yeah! <laughs> and you get to play with the the terrain that comes in the box is like these little couple walls. They actually look pretty cool. Yeah, they look nice. Yeah, I'll see how they I because I love myself some good terrain. We'll see how we'll see how it ends up looking. I mean, I, I, I like I like the I like the scavenified terrain. That's not something I've seen in a while. Yeah. So I I think you and I are are both saying this is a a, a thumbs up release. I am saying I I am saying a wait till it is slightly discounted before buying. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much it, how much it costs. Did, did, yeah. did they say how much it costs? I don't know. No, not yet. That's the that's the thing. But it doesn't matter however much they're saying. I'm saying wait. Until it's discounted I, to buy it. <laughs> I, I personally am going to wait to see if this becomes a uh, Dominion situation. Yeah. the and, and I said this with Dominion before. It's I think part of Dominion's problem was, was A, it was way overproduced because of the issues with, was it 8th edition 40K? Uh, yeah. It, and uh, it, it was fa two fairly unpopular armies. <laughs> Yes, yes, they, 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 the, the unfortunate bit is that all, all of the stuff in that box was useless in the game, uh, except yeah. for one, except for one Stormcast model. Yeah, it was like, they did the standard GW thing of it's like, well, everything, we're going to give you a bunch of cool stuff in the box, but none of it is going to be useful in the game. I mean, that was just actually a huge whiff on GW's part because they basically released a bunch of new models that weren't good. Like, like that was like a, a complete whiff because you, I, I I know what you're saying. I would yeah. say I I, th I think that's for the specialized stuff. But like, there's like the annihilators being bad, probably not intentional. Because even the hammer, the double, the even the two handed hammer ones were good for like a second, and not really. They were like mediocre immediately. The spear stormcast were bad, just just in general. Uh, the new models they released, like the t the the great weapon wielding on foot guys, were pretty bad. Like that that like they gave they just kind of whiffed on the rules for the new stuff. They were way. We talk about overtuned a lot. They were way undertuned, I think. But that's, but I, th I think that's a standard GW thing. Most of the stuff that they ever release in starter sets is not good, especially in the Age of Sigmar. It's always been that way. Oh, like, I know, but that transferred to the actual releases as well. Because like normally you'd you'd have mm. like like sort of like the annihilators. Like the annihilator that came in the box was the hammer and the shield one, right? So you'd assume, <laughs> okay, well the one that you can't build is going to be the better one, which was accurate. Okay. The two-handed yeah. hammer one was better. But the two-handed hammer one was also bad. Like that was that was the that was the problem. Is like I see, like I see what you're saying. Yes, every, and I agree everything with that. was bad. Yeah, and then the the new orcs, whatever they're called, are just they the cruel boys. They, yeah, the cruel boys were never just as popular. Like they, people, I think a, I think were, a lot of people loved them until they saw the rules. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think there was, a, I think that there's. A, but I also think there's a level of people who are like, where are my hunched back orcs? You know, like they like the classic design. But I'm not saying that the models weren't cool. I did like a lot of it. I really like the Hobgoblin models. I thought those were great. And I love the color scheme that they painted them too. Yes, the Hobgoblin slitters look awesome. Yeah, I, I just feel like that entire box set was was a big whiff on many levels, which is why you could find it as low as like 100 bucks. Yep. Which is oh, I mean, an there's excellent just, price point for it. There's, there's tons of there's tons of them around. I mean, and in th <coughs> in in theory, that that might end up being a, a good way to pick up some uh, a cheap way to pick up some good stuff for the new edition, depending on how the cruel boys are redone. Because the cruel boys are going to get the cruel boys are going to be completely fucking overhauled. Yeah. Trust me, they're going to be completely fucking overhauled. Yeah, the they, cruel... they, they they are going to be the future for orcs because they're discontinuing the savage orcs. Like they the direction is going to be they want iron jaws and cruel boys to be orcs. Yeah. And uh, the what's it called the 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 stormcast the ones that were in previous edition might be better this edition who knows yeah yeah so we'll see yeah so I mean the Skaven Tide is probably my feeling is it's going to be like two twenty five that's going to be my feeling on the um on on the the actual MSRP okay all right and now I don't know that for sure and it's actually kind of funny because one of my players for my D and D game is you know works at for Games Workshop. 
and we have our next game, yeah, our next session scheduled. And he's like, um, I'm just letting you guys know that if it's pre-order day for the new AOS, I have to drop. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, I, I, and I was kind of like, really? Because, you know, are people really going to go s- scrambling to to pre-order Skaventide? It just seems like something that, A, I highly doubt that it's going to be that frenetic of a pre-order for. And B, I don't think that um, there's gonna, not going to be enough for people who are going to want to pre-order. Like, I, I feel like if I'd wandered in on, like, Tuesday after the pre-order went up, I could probably still pre-order and be fine. Uh, probably. I mean, who knows? We'll, we, we have yeah. to see. Because, I mean, they're... I I know they're ne- they're definitely not going to overproduce this one. <laughs> no. Um, and I I think that it'll it'll just be like, yeah, you know, I'll be able to find it if I need it, and it probably will be dropped down to about one eighty one seventy five. Okay, you could probably get it for. Yeah, see, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait as well, just because I mean, I have t- I have too much shit to do now already. Like, I'm not gonna buy another Star oh, yeah. that I'm not gonna I, get to for forever. Dude, I got cowboys. Woo! You got cowboys. You got to get a city slicker to. Yeah. No, that's that's Back to Future Part Three. Is it? Oh no shit. Okay. Yes. That that's always my go-to cowboy song. I I immediately made it city slickers in my head. Yes. Norman. Hello, Norman. New York City. Go to go watch the original City Slickers. It's a great movie. Yes. It's like. And you know what's even more fun about City Slickers is I saw that as a kid, like, what, 91, 90, when it came out. And I was like, oh, this is a fun little movie. And I had no idea who Jack Palance was. And now that I'm old enough and have watched a shit ton of crappy B movies that were produced in the 70s and 80s, it makes me laugh so hard that Jack Palance won the Academy Award for Best Actor, uh, Best Supporting Actor, when he was in so many terrible movies in the 80s. To be fair, you're only supposed to gauge people on the movie that you're judging, not all of their previous work. I know, but man, some of that previous work is terrible. <laughs> that's that's no, fair. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But when the body of work is so terrible. Well, that's why you don't give the guy a lifetime achievement award. <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. He got his he got his Academy Award. And then it's like you go back and watch these circuits. You're like, the one thing. <laughs> that or Batman, 1989's Batman. <laughs> Hi there, Jack. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's good. <clears throat> Where Jack Pounce actually outdoes, outdoes Jack Nicholson's The Joker when you watch it. Um, but head over to the Game Classy Discord, which is where you could see my uh, my continuing progress on Dracula's America. Ooh. You know, I undersold it when I was talking about it on the last cast. I was I was talking about some of the rules, and I I wanted to just add to it that it's you know um one of the one of the things that is kind of cool about it is remember how i was saying about how you draw the deck you draw a number of cards for all the character for all the figures in your in your war band or whatever in your your gang Mm -hmm. you actually only draw so you have like let's say you have 10 members in your gang you draw five cards not 10. okay you draw half because each card you put down you can either give one character two activations or activate two characters once okay at the same time so it's like it gives you it gives you that choice of it's like well is my guy gonna move and shoot move and attack or is my or am i just gonna have two guys move or i'm gonna have two guys shoot kind of thing i think it's like it kind of gives that feel of a gunfight where it's like we're gonna go on these guys are gonna do suppressing fire and this guy's gonna run and shoot kind of thing i i love that concept i think it's so fun but anywho it sounds good <clears throat> yes. Um, so let's talk. Uh, so they also did a bunch of other stuff that they're showing. They got a new Sororitas, which looks terrible, by the way. Um, it's like the, it's like this the flying figure. It's like I, I these guys are literally the flying nun from the old seventies TV show. <laughs> but it just looked like it's a terrible sculpt. I just don't like it at all. It looks. I, like I don't think I don't think I've seen that, but that sounds very funny. It's just it's one character that they're releasing, and it's just it looks it's a new canonist and it looks terrible. You got big brain gene stealer cult guy though, which is great. Yeah, that guy's awesome. Like that guy is meme worthy. Big brain material. Yeah, he's got, he's he's got a big brain. <laughs> Yeah. sorry no i, I don't know i there, there's a gooning joke to be made here but i can't think of it <laughs> you love your gooning joke i do i do gooning is funny yes. um then you have i think i put up a meme about that where it's like hired goons and they're like we're here to goon yes <laughs> that's like, right and he's, like, he's like what's wrong with henchmen these days <laughs> yes um 
the uh, 40 uh, 30k is doing a plastic mechanicus because they just did the plastics uh solar auxilla now these guys look fucking amazing um and i'm not buying them because i have a bunch of the resin guys but holy shit these guys are great looking um including the new plastic trios which is the tank tree aros i think is what it's called um new plastic uh what's it called the 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 big cyborgs those guys look fucking great and a new plastic mega magos which looks great I, everything about this release smells of just of, of talent so they look, they look awesome i mean yeah. they look really cool like if 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 i was gonna play a uh, horse horsey i would absolutely play mechanicus i think they're super, yeah. they're super cool do they suck um no they're actually pretty decent okay um and they're they're really cool on what you could do with them that's fine yeah i mean that's the that's the key like i don't i just don't want the shit to suck because like playing an army that sucks is not fun like it doesn't matter like no matter what it's just it's not fun playing an army that just flat out sucks I don't know their rules that well with their new release that they had for this edition. I but I do know in previous editions there was a a very high dependency on the big bots. So okay. you'd have a lot of big bots in your army. Okay, I mean that's cool. Like I said, like I said yeah. it, it, it's cool. I mean they look neat. If I ever do a uh, Horus Heresy, I'm absolutely going to do the, do them because I think they're I think they're fucking dope looking. Um, and yeah, yeah I'd rather I, play I, Horus Heresy than 40k. So oh yeah, and I would uh I. I would love to do an army of these guys, but I would probably do big bots because I like the big robots the best. <laughs> they they really do look like 1950s sci-fi robots pretty hard. Oh, yeah. so they, they, they're they absolutely a forbidden planet all over them. Yeah, I do like the Thalax too, which are kind of like the medium-sized robots. I think they're kind of fun looking. I like their uh, I like their design. Yeah, and they got and I like they're they're not zombie zombies. Those are, those are oh, cool. Yeah, though, and the, like everything about it, and I love the poses that make them look like zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're dope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this I say everything about that release, I really, really like, and I like that they um, I like that they have the triaros, which is in plastic finally, and I, hopefully they'll have some um, what's it called, some variations, so that you can build the other tanks that they have. Mm. Um, my favorite thing with the Mechanicus is their big, kind of super heavy so to speak that they can that they can throw in their army is basically just a titan gun thrown onto a tank like two tanks and it just rolls around the table and just build pie pie plates everything <laughs> so it's 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 one of my one of my more favorite things but it's kind of awkward and and weird to use mm -hmm. which is fun um but yes that's uh the mechanicus legions imperialis is still kind of chugging along their with their new release dev devastation to learn I, I believe all of the easy. all of the things that have already been paid for will be will be produced and then they will discontinue that game yeah i agree um that's that's then, that's that is my 100 percent. i think that is what's happening with that game they're, they're gonna they're gonna make everything they've already paid for and then that's it done because as far as, as from what i've heard from all sources is that game is a fucking flop yeah um so and then necromunda is getting hive secundus which kind of looks like a second edition for necromunda they're not saying it's a second edition but i believe it is a second edition maybe um, it's a it, maybe it's a 1.5 yeah it could be um i but i see it as so the first edition of necromunda was like a um under like a like a, a tunnels game this is kind of a tunnels game it's um they are doing the they're kind of doing what they're doing with Warcry as well, where it's like we're kind of getting away from gangs and we're going towards smaller kind of army, uh, like warbands for armies. So they have like a Gene Stealer uh, cult warband with some actual Gene Stealers, and then they have the Spires, Clan Spires. So it's kind of like a combination of the two. I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't follow Necromunda as much as opposed to just going like, fuck, these middle models are cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's basically every time. Just like, damn, those are fucking dope. Those are dope. I wish I cared more to paint those, but I don't. I got to <laughs> paint cowboys. They're all the cool video game announce announces as well. Yeah, and then I was going to talk about the video game announcements. The Skulls 2024. Um, they're doing a, a new edition, uh, Mechanicus 2, which people loved Mechanicus. I didn't uh, know yeah. Mechanicus was so well loved. So here's the thing. Uh, like, 
I, I never played it, but I have listened to the soundtrack many, many times. I, uh, people love the soundtrack to Mechanicus. It's fucking great. It's really good. Like, right now, everyone listening, fucking boot up your YouTubes and uh, go to di- direct it to the Mechanicus OST for Warhammer 4000, and you will be blown away. I could not believe how fucking good that soundtrack is. <laughs> I'm not even joking, like, and I'm not exaggerating. Please listen to it. It's incredible. It's a fucking ridiculous soundtrack. Whoever made it was just like, I'm going to make the fucking hardest soundtrack known to man. Yeah, it is. It's like weird industrial kind of like, I don't I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, it's just it's just real. It's just real good. Yeah. And now you could play as the Necrons, which people are super excited about. Uh, yes. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, now, the, is this the first? No, I guess. Um, not Total War, but um, Dawn of Dawn War, War had Necrons as, yeah, as playable. Right, yeah, right, that, right. and they were fucking broken. They were so the, So this would be this only the second game, I think, that has ever had Necrons as a playable faction. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because I, I was going to I was actually thinking about that the other day, about how there are certain factions that have like never had playable factions in actual video games. Mm. Like, I don't think you've ever been actually able to play aside from total war which i at dawn of dawn of war which has had almost every faction um most uh, more of the modern games have, have not had a lot of playable armies i believe as of soul storm which was the which was the final expansion for dawn of war i believe that added every existing faction to the game at, at the that, time at that time yeah they, they had a, they had a complete it, it was a complete it is it is a complete snapshot of every faction in 40k at that time yeah because they didn't have squats or mechanicus at that time so right and yeah but they have but they have everything they even got uh you you couldn't play them by themselves but they had demon demon hunters and space marines so did they have did they have sisters in that game i don't remember yes yes sisters were in soulstorm the the new the 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 two new factions introduced in soulstorm were dark eldar and sisters of battle Deldar. yes the Deldar and the yeah, and the the they the you know, it is unfortunate that they never finished. Uh, they never actually got to do a balance patch, so Soulstorm is still still quite playable, but um, it's not really, uh, it's very imbalanced. Um, so they also they're doing a new version of uh, Talisman, the game that you always get confused with Warhammer Quest. Yes. Um, yay, Talisman, a game that's been out for thirty years and has really rarely changed its rules. Oh uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, think... I mean it's a fifth edition digital. The biggest thing about it is that the base game is going to be free, so that's really cool. Oh, that's cool um space marine 2 is getting a co-op pl- a three-player co-op mode so that you can play hell divers with space marines <laughs> hell yeah i mean it sounds kind of cool i've i've been i've been interested in hell divers um because I've, I've just heard good things about it but i've you know of course i'm i'm kind of not been playing video games lately but so with space marine i'll give it a try space marine 2 might actually make me buy a ps5 because i want to play space marine <laughs> I mean, it looks it looks awesome. Yeah, looks I mean, really, I might just really buy good. Space Marine on my Steam. But uh, that's yeah, I mean, as long as you got as long as you got a PC that can run it, it, it it's looking like it's going to be pretty intensive. I got a eight mil uh, eight megabyte uh, graphics card. I think I should be okay, right? I don't know. I have to see the. You know, with, it's impossible to guess with PC games because it's all about their optimization and shit. It's really annoying. Optimization. Then the Space Marines are getting a VR game, which is uh, fun. I like. I don't know if you saw the, the the video with the guy putting on the VR helmet, and I was just like, this guy takes himself super seriously. I bet you he plays like Sisters of Battle and takes it super seriously. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think that's that's right. Like, like, um, like l- looking at this guy in the video, I'm like, fuck this dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean that, that should be fun. Apparently, the other 40k VR game is really good too. This this is a battle one. Oh, okay. I didn't, yeah, I, I have no I, idea. I guess the only the only Warhammer VR game that isn't very good is the Stormcast one. Um, is the Stormcast one. Um, and also you could buy your your Secret Lab gamer chair, uh, Ultramarine gamer chair, uh, for for your for your your Twitch live stream. So uh, it's Secret Labs. If you are um out there listening to our podcast, you could send me one of those. I will I will put it on while I live stream this podcast. I will yeah, I will me, sit in the the ultramarine chair. Me too, Secret Lab. I will the, I the will, throne of McCrag. Yes, uh, we, will, we will we will gladly we will gladly take a sponsorship and we will review your chair and play and stream from them. No, no, I'll no be question. like I had to cut a hole in the bottom so that I could poop while playing <laughs> because I'm so hardcore into playing that I have to poop while playing. Yeah, that makes sense. That that, that this, just makes sense. This gamer chair has no poop hole. 
<laughs> My biggest complaint about the secret lab chair has nothing to do with the comfort, which I find is high, the design, which I find is good, and the armrests, which I find to be sturdy and stable. The biggest issue I have is it is a 2024 design gaming chair that lacks a poop hole. Who does that? <laughs> I mean, I'm a male gamer. I'm not one of those female gamers that poops in a diaper to sell to her fans. That's I'm true. Sorry, guys. That's gross. I shouldn't talk about poop on the, on the podcast without a warning. <laughs> it's a scat warning. You got a scat. You got a, it's a scat attack. It was a surprise scat attack. Yeah. Always give a warning before you mention the poops. <laughs> um, poops. They're doing some DLC for Bolt Gun, which is fun. Um, I, I have not, I, I am planning on playing bolt gun this summer. Hell yeah. I, I, it, it's great. <laughs> you're you're going to, you're going to have a blast. If you, you it, it, it will, it will hit all of the fucking things in your brain. I guarantee it. Nice. Uh, rogue trader vo is getting a, a DLC for, uh, called void shadows. God, so I, I really want to play the game. I have to, I have, I have some, some 3d isometric, uh, CRPGs that I'm playing already. Like I'm playing, um, uh what the fuck a divinity original sin with kevin right now and like i want to finish that before i play rogue trader but fuck dude i want to play rogue Trader so bad mm -hmm. then uh total war is getting karnak the three-headed hellhound or a uh, cornhound yep which is very cool yeah you'll you'll get that guy uh dark tide is getting a uh dlc uh secrets of the machine god so that yeah. one is uh that's that's the one that's like vermintide Yes, yeah, and and it, yeah. And, it, and it was it was ass shit garbage, and has been patched to be pretty good, and okay. is and, and is improving with every patch. Yeah. Um. I, apparently, there's a new update coming for Vermintide Two as well. You're getting a new uh, Blood Bowl DLC for Season Five, Blood Bowl Three Season Five. So uh, apparently, Blood Bowl Blood Bowl the video game. If you're a Blood Bowl fan, uh, the video game is literally Blood Bowl. Yeah, like, that's I've I've heard nothing but good things about the Blood Bowl video game. Yeah, it is a one. No, it is it's the Warhammer game that I've always that I've always said I wanted, like where it's just Warhammer with uh, graphics. Um, but it is it is that for Blood Bowl. Um, then there's a what ta Tacticus Tacitus. Uh, um, oh yeah, that's the, that's a mobile game. Apparently, it's, it's pretty fun. Game. Yeah. Then you got uh, Speed Freaks, which is the uh, multiplayer combat racer. Which is yeah, what, what, what? What's a good multiplayer combat racer that I can compare it to? Would it be like um, Dirt? Or I think it was, I think it's called Dirt. Uh, yeah, there, I don't know. There's a, there's one from Bethesda that that is that. It's it's like it's like it's it's cruel. It's rolling around at the speed of sound, blowing things. But I mean, that game looks fun as hell. I'll, I'll probably give it a shot. Yeah, it says it's free right now. You could download it till May thirtieth. So if you yeah, just want to play it, beta is free. Yeah. Um, then you, of course, you got a couple mobile games. You got Warp Forge and Legions, which I believe are both card games. Yes. Yep. Uh, and Warp, uh, Warp Forge looks pretty good. Yeah. And then uh, what combat cards, which I I always see, um, I see fucking ads for everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Combat cards. Combat. If I'm not must, I'm please, please anyone correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't combat cards just war? I think so. Isn't it literally just war? Like, isn't it like you just flip off the top and you compare the stats, and the dude with better stats wins? <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't, remember, I don't know quite, but yeah. Um, World of Tanks, you're getting the uh, the Rogaldorn tank in World of Tanks. So, um, you know, don't be like spoiling, was... don't be spoiling real world military secrets now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, or um, child porn, which is also what's shared on World of Tanks discords. That's true. Um, so I always, uh, well, you know how I always talk about the the best organized fetish on the internet is feet fetishists. Mm -hmm. um, I take that back. the The most uh, well researched and documented fetish on the internet are World of Tanks players. <laughs> <laughs> they must masturbate over tanks constantly. Also, I mean, air, also airplanes. Oh, yeah, and well, just you know, military equipment in general. Like I, I. Oh no, sorry. I mean, like I mean, like commercial airplanes. Uh, oh, I, I, it, like any like here. Here's the thing. This is why. This is one of the reasons that everyone should be feel extremely safe flying in a commercial airplane. Uh, every commercial airplane that crashes is a wife that dies. Understand this. Oh, okay. That that is that is literally how it is. Like the the fucking mechanics who work on that shit, they are into those planes. So trust me. Someone is babying that fucking plane. 
So I, I okay. I'm just uh I I just I I guess, but I'm just saying the wor world of tanks players. No one is more. No one fetishizes a mechanical object more than world of tanks players. In in lore, in Games Workshop lore, the Mechanicus of Mars are literally just world of tank players taken to the extreme. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, they literally go on their Discord and they're like, "Fuck yeah." Mm, m90 mm, the entire time nice but anyway those are those have been the big releases for games workshop i don't think there's anything else that we missed uh no and and oh and uh fyi the, if anyone's interested in getting that warhammer chair it's 600 bucks which yeah. i don't think is that bad for a gaming chair uh i i i don't know for sure um like I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty good for a gaming chair. It, it looks uh, kind of shitty, though. I mean, I, well, I mean, I shouldn't say it looks kind of shitty. It actually looks kind of nice. But I mean, in terms of like my forty-year-old ass, I don't know if that would support my forty-year-old ass. Ah, looks, luckily yeah. for you, they offer three different sizes with with heights and weight recommendations. Ooh, well, you so, have to you have to have weight recommendations in this day and age. So. Yes, so perhaps perhaps you need the XL, uh, which is uh, which is for men for five eleven to six nine for one hundred seventy five to four hundred pounds. Oh, okay, yeah, that's probably one I would need. Yes, um, and it, it, it is it is uh, it, apparently it is it is literally like a it's more volume to the chair, like the, like the parts are all just bigger. So there you go. Yeah, there we go. All right, so uh that's all that's all the gw releases um man i was a fucking 30 year anniversary at the end of next generation i should i should i really should watch all good things in this weekend as a uh as a as a um as a in memorial of the next generation you're right i should watch all good things as well that's i mean it's it's the thing is, is all good things. It, it's it's good, but just imagine if if Star Trek was allowed to have kind of like a meta arc Ugh. in the next generation. Not like oh. nothing too deep. I'm not talking like lost. like DS Nine style. Yeah, like DS Nine style. Just imagine how good that would be. From like, let's say season three, they had like a, an arc with the Cardassians and Q, and like all these different like sub arcs, right? Mm -hmm. That all get wrapped up in all good things. How good that would be. Oh, yeah. But it's like as a standalone, all good things is pretty good. You know, you can you watch Encounter Farpoint and all good things. So it's like what? Four episodes? Because all good things is a double episode, right? Or is it like just it's a double episode? It's, it's a, double a double episode. episode. So it's four episodes total. You could watch together the first episode and the last episode and they kind of bookend. So I think we could do that. I think I could do that. Oh, so sad. I'm just mentioning that because I'm looking up Wonders of the First, and then I saw your post about it. Yes, yeah, no, it was good. <laughs> All right, yes, so sir. now some, Here we some, go. Con some the controversies. Drama. The drama. Uh, Wonders of the First CCG is a Kickstarter. It's got five days to go, so it'll be four days after this podcast drops. It is a collectible card game that features both AI art and NFT. NFTs. <laughs> Um, so of course this is, this shows the great disconnect that I like to point out with most things on the internet, where it's like, you have these vocal people who fucking hate AI art and NFTs and all of this shit. Yet this game has with only 1500 backers has made $900,000, mm -hmm. almost a million dollars. Um, yep, you can hate, you can hate, like we said it on the because you can hate AI as much as you want, but it is fucking here and you can't stop it. You cannot stop it. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I want artists to do stuff. I think artists are super important. I'm just saying is that it, you can't stop it at this point. You can't. So you could yell and scream and hold your breath and kick your feet as much as you want, but it's not going to do anything. Yeah, unless um, you, you start, can only unless vote. You start, unless you start, yeah, see, unless you start doing things that I can't say that could get me like raided by the FBI. Um, Dude, I think you would. You you <laughs> at some at some points on these podcasts, you actually have threatened elected officials. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, this, I, I, all of my statements are strictly for entertainment purposes, of course. As, as I've <laughs> oh, as okay. I've stated, as I've stated before and multiple times in this podcast, my statements are my opinions only and done in a comedic manner for entertainment purposes only. They are not serious opinions. <laughs> um. Yeah, so you you get uh, it's it's just it looks like a terrible card game. I don't even know why anybody is is backing this. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, it looks like dog shit, but it's this is this is the thing. Uh, you you have 
he, I'll tell you, I mean, I'll tell you really why. Like there's, there's a, I have an actual reason why if you, okay. if you want, if you want to know, and this is, this, you know, this is maybe a little tinfoil hatty, but um, so the, the push for NFTs and cryptocurrency and AI stuff is all pretty much shoved by the same people, like the same people who are like, you know, jizzing about it. It's, it's literally the same group. Right. But also that same group is the group that buys cryptocurrency, blah, 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 blah. So you have a lot of people with, with, with money who bought it, who either got rich from it or were already rich and are using it to launder or whatever, you know, scams you can do with uh, cryptocurrency. And then they see a Kickstarter that is using that technology and they're like, oh, well, I mean, we can't let this fail. That, that could be it too. I, I just want to point out that the the biggest tier is the Spectrum tier. Now the Spectrum tier gives you i'm sure i think this is the um like the dealer tier right so you get five cases of first edition booster boxes and a horde of the highly sought after silver pack box toppers um with 30 of them uh two cases of starter decks uh, the kickstarter exclusives all of that so a play mat rare play mat exclusive uncommon play mat common play mat with six art designs to choose from and a kickstarter exclusive promo card and that is forty three hundred dollars, and sixteen people have backed that at forty three hundred dollars. So I'm assuming that is store tier, right? Sounds like, like dealer it, yeah. tier. Yeah, All sounds right. like it. And then the thousand dollar tier, which is basically you just get one case of all of that, and one hundred and ninety two people have backed that at a thousand dollars. So that might be also a store a dealer tier, but that would explain why this this kickstarter is close to a million dollar kickstarter mm -hmm. for essentially a dog shit game with shitty ai art it's not shitty ai art but it's it's shitty ai art in terms of that it is ai art mm -hmm. it is nothing it's, it it looks like ai art right that's the thing too is like i mean i like i don't know about you but like i've it's gotten to the point where i can now tell even when it's good i can be like that's ai that's not ai that's ai that's not AI. i've gotten oh, yeah. pretty good at it for sure it has a very distinct look, especially like, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it like, I like how they cropped out all the hands. But well, um. here's here's the here's the problem with here's the problem with AI art and why it's so successful and why it was so easily successful and why most people don't understand, realize, or care about the difference. But you you know the average amount of time that a person looks at art at an art museum, right? Do you know how long that is? How long? Thirty seconds. That 30 is the, seconds. That is the average amount of time that a human being looks at each piece of art at an art museum. 30 seconds. So let's cut that in half because we're going to go with social media uh, time, uh, social media attention span. So that means that you're that most people are going to look at art online. And, and I, I'm, I'm the same. Uh, online, on Twitter, you're going to look at it for 15 seconds. In that 15 seconds, AI art is perfect. You, you literally cannot – like it is not – you are not able to determine – the issues that it has because it's just it your your brain doesn't process it if you sit and look at it even if you don't know what to look for if you know anything about art or even basic anatomy you will eventually start to see things that don't make sense and are weird and your brain will be like what the fuck and that but the reason it works is because the average span of time that people spend looking at art doesn't matter so that's why i think once people actually get these cards i think people are going to slowly realize like oh these kind of look like shit <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I. Who knows? I mean, um, I can't say. I can't say for sure. I'm just saying because, like, there's like there's there's a few AI arts. Well, like, oh, that looks nice. And then like I look and I'm like, oh, that. Uh, like as you look closer, their hand is like holding something, and you didn't notice it first, but notice it's like, oh, they have eleven fingers. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's like they probably got someone who knows how to do it at least to do the stuff that's going to get rid of the extra fingers and things like that. Right. That's the other thing too. Is it is it, is it straight? Like, I mean, not, not knowing their design process, it could be AI guided art because I know there's a there's a couple artists who use AI for their own art, and what they do is they've trained them they've trained the bot on their art, like. They've trained it on their just their art. So what they do is they like they they then prompt the bot to essentially give them. It's just, they use it as a time saver. So Im imagine it to, to put it to put it in a perspective. Uh, it would be as if I could wave my hand and have models for Warhammer that are already at the um, I've washed them with contrast phase. 
and now it, now it's just time to do highlights. That's hmm. the that's the equivalent of what training it on your own art does. Because when it when you when it produces art, it looks like yours, but there's gonna be all sorts of problems. But fixing, adjusting, repainting, going over it, creating a new piece out of what it produced, doing all that work is still way faster than you doing the you know building it up from nothing. So that so it might be AI, and I call that personally, I call that AI guided art, and I think that art is just fine because that still has a bunch of because i don't ever mind people cutting short like taking shortcuts shortcuts are fine uh but completely replacing it is is wrong and also they're trained on their own art so it is their own style so yeah that, that's yeah, i mean yeah i like everything it's a tool and you know but my my whole thing is always going to be you're you're not going to stop it um you, you have no power welcome to capitalism yeah, it does, um, and it does, it does suck that it was basically turned. It was immediately jumped on as a high-speed art theft machine. Yeah, well, exactly. But anyway, um, the controversy-wise is people, you know, absolutely hate AI art and NFTs. Um, they're review bombing it on Board Game Geek right now. So I it think has it a was, one. I think it might it, be one of the lowest-rated things on Board Game Geek. Yeah, Board Game Geek. It's rated as a one, yet it is still making a million dollars. So the designers probably don't care. Oh, they definitely don't. They definitely don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm sure the production cost on the game is going to be relatively high from what I see. Like, you got to produce a lot of cardboard, but I, I'm, they're still probably going to end up with, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in profit on it. But I, I don't know the costs on that sort of thing. I've never really looked it up myself. Yeah. Considering the fact that they're not paying for artists, I think that's a big deal. <laughs> oh well, that's that's the thing. They might be like there's the, one of the biggest controversies recently was for a game called uh, Champions of Otherworldly Magic. Yeah. Uh, and Champions of Otherworldly Magic paid they 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 paid their artist quote unquote uh, ninety thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, to generate art, and he made all of their art. It was one guy. He got fifteen thousand dollars a month. While doing this, uh, he worked two day. He worked two work days each month, so he oh, literally worked sixteen hours for fifteen thousand dollars to do this. Uh, he generated all the art for them, uh, and it looks great. Well, and that's kind of that's kind of what I'm assuming is something very similar, is yeah. that they they paid like some dude a small amount of money to make sure that the art that they're generating doesn't have extra fingers and blends yeah. well and kind of has yeah. a consistent look. Yeah, yeah, and people and people were people were furious about it, and and yeah. and here's and th this is the thing, like this, like I, th and I actually just I just to stroke myself off about it is like I literally talked yeah. about how how AI art should be used. AI art should be used by artists to train on their own style to help them do shortcuts, but immediately it was used to just fucking steal every piece of art on the internet. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, so it, so there you go. As I tell people with AI art, you don't hate AI art, you hate capitalism. Yeah, you hate that. You don't hate AI art. <laughs> you hate that AI art is used to generate profit. Yes. Be with with you know, so they're not even working off the labor of one person. They're making off the labor of all people. Yes, so, it's just like machine translation. Machine translation yeah. is still dog. Machine translation is still dog shit. It is still bad. It's 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 been bad. It's 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 still not good. But it is cheap and it is free. And because it exists, it devalued the entire industry of translation. Yes. You hate capitalism. Go hate on capitalism. Don't hate on the, the trench crusade or not trench crusade on, on, on uh, wonders of the first or whatever it's called. <laughs> get, get your get yourself a hammer and sickle tattoo. Grow out your beard. Put on a Marx poster and, and educate yourself. <laughs> yeah. put, put on your Che Guevara T-shirt from the 90s the vintage that you paid sixty dollars for. Yes. Capitalism. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's it's very silly. I don't know. It's it's just one of those. I mean, I don't know. I just I, I I cannot stress about things that I cannot do anything about. I don't have the I don't have the energy to do that. No, anymore. we're too old to have energy anymore. Yeah, I mean, um, I've got plenty of energy. I just spend it on things like working out and running and not thinking about things I can't do a fucking thing about. I spend it on painting cowboys. Dun, 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 that's the third time. That's the last time I'll do that. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Um, so then, we, yeah, I, I kind of spoiled it for the next controversy, which is Trench Crusade. Um, so have you, you've heard about Trench Crusade, right? Uh, 
or is it only through this what you've seen on the on the forums Trent, on, Trent, on, uh, on our on discord trench crusade is that the one that you said was like the like the, like someone was like oh this is the this is the chud game or something yeah so trench trench crusade is um a, a, a world war one kind of a cult game designed by thomas P piernan the Pirinin, Pirinin, the guy who did Mordheim. Yeah. Um, old GW guy. He wrote a couple of uh, codexes and army books. Um, just worked for the company for years. Put out his own game. It's called Trench Crusade. He has a beta out um, with the, all the rules online. Um, the problem is, is that YouTubers discovered it. Like uh, Chud YouTubers discovered mm -hmm. it. And we're like, finally, a game for the anti-woke. Um and so they kind of glommed onto the Discord for 28, which was the guy's company. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really interesting looking. It's basically just a, a grimdark 40K, like another grimdark. It's, you know, a 40K with a more uh, Dark Souls kind of vibe to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's like Catholics versus demons and, and like a lot of stuff like that, where, which is where it comes from. I think it's like. It, it's got like a, a very super overly religious tone to it. It's kind of like 40K taken up to the extreme. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't like describe it more. Yeah, it looks than, cool. Yeah, it, it looks really neat. I, I think that the 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 whole thing will, will work out for it. it. It looks like a cool game, but they actually had to like kick a bunch of people off the discord and they're like, look. We like gay people. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We, the, like, we're, we, we're, like, we, are, we are not the Nazi game. <laughs> yeah, we're not the Nazi game. Like, if you want to say that people of you know differing races or differing, uh, if you want to say people different from you, how about that? Different yeah. from you, because that's literally all it boils down to. Yeah, I, I just find it so hysterical that this is going on at this point. Um, huh. Uh, whatever dude it's the it's the fucking edgy edgelord fucking culture war it's gotta happen and you know they got uh, 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 whatever dude whatever don't care smash your head smash your heads into the hammer please thank you <laughs> carry on yeah i mean uh, you know i i don't whatever I, I i can't even with it because and actually the game is older than it than just recently it's been around for like since 2018 i think is like when they've been working on it since then it's that, it's um, that, uh, it's that, that's that, um, gif. It's also tiresome. Yeah. I mean, oh the, yeah, yeah, no, no, this is super old. Cause I remember the, I remember the art, the key art and the sculpt for the, uh, really tall lanky guy with the gun over his shoulder and the real long arms. Yeah. I do, I do remember this. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's just that it's like, I, I wish chuds and just these people would get it through their heads of that. No one wants them in their game like like legit gaming does not lend itself to conservatism <laughs> it doesn't no not unless generally. you're playing monopoly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, not generally. So it, it is. It is a true. It's a true fact. The reason the reason your opinions are unpopular isn't is because your opinions are unpopular. That is the, yeah. that is the reason. <laughs> like the reason people don't like you is because because of your opinions is because your opinions are dog shit and they are unpopular. So yeah, I mean, that is why all of your that is why all your, your only friends are people who share your dog shit opinions. <laughs> It's a, I can't understand why someone my age, and when I say that is someone who is between the, let's say between the ages of 38 and 42, right? Or let's, let's even go, I, I will say 35 to 45. You grew up watching fucking G.I. Joe and Transformers and Superman and Batman were literally your same political, like political and social views were being told to you as a child are dumb. Like, like literally GI Joe would say, Hey, don't be racist. Right. Like, you, <laughs> like, like every, like they're the bad guys. But the problem is Joe, here's the problem. They liked Cobra. No, they did it though. It's like when you're, no, 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 up, they did. They liked Cobra. They absolutely liked like, Cobra. Gar like, I guarantee it. Okay. Well that even more, it teaches that, that even more shows. It's like you grow up liking the bad guys. Yes. You are literally the bad guy in this situation. Yes, yes, they're the bad guys. Well, no, no, that's the thing that like they it's it, it circles back to the the empire is actually the good guys argument for Star Wars. Yeah, it's like liking the bad guy makes you the bad guy. Yes, but like, no, that's the, the real thing. World. That's that's the thing is is the 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 mental uh jump rope or whatever you call it, the mental hoops 
jumped through are that they're actually the good guys. See, that's that's what you don't understand. Is that well, they I, are the good guys, and that's part of the problem with the empire. Like that, the meme, the empire did nothing wrong. Is that the empire did a lot wrong, and it's this is satire originally, and now it has been taken on as truth. Which, like most conservative views, they start out as satire and then become reality. Yes, that's why. That's sad. why. That's why you shouldn't satirize conservative ideas because they just yeah, think I, that you're genuine about it. I exactly. It's they, like, they don't you, understand. Like 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 Colbert literally had conservative fans for a very long time because they didn't get it. No, they don't. They don't get it at all. Yes, they've only got one joke, so their humor isn't very big. Their range no. isn't very big. They've got one joke, and that's the only one they got. <laughs> yeah, they, like, and, they'll, and they'll use it every time. You can't grow up liking the bad guy and think you're the good guy. Like, that's just literally how it works. It, it's, it's, it's true. All right, so that's, that's on that end. Um, so do uh, you want to go over really quick? I, I have, I'm going to do this really quickly um, because there's not much – so remember last cast I was saying I wanted to go over um, proxy models for uh, the orcs and goblins because orcs and goblins have been released. Um, so I looked through a ton of orc and goblin proxy armies that are available online for STLs. Um, I thought there would be more for full armies, but there's not. And a lot of them, I'm just discounting right off the bat. I'm not even going to go over a lot of them because the, they're so differently designed that you can't even really call them an orc, like a fantasy orc army. And by that, I mean like a lot of them that are doing it end up looking more like what we would consider bugbears mm -hmm. or, you know, the more pig faced orcs, the classic one on that end. So I really don't want to like even spend time going over those because I don't think those are good proxies for fantasy. Yeah. I mean, like that's an alternative army as opposed to a proxy. Um, but, you know, and, and way more of them are Blood Bowl teams than I'd care to admit. Uh, yeah, there's a ton of Blood Bowl teams. <laughs> there's so many STL Blood Bowl teams. Like, is Blood Bowl that popular? They must be. Apparently. But... Anyway, so I'm only going to highlight two for this uh, cast. And if there's more, I'll, I'll bring them up later on. Um, of course, the one that uh, I wanted to bring up was the... Uh, well, I, I'm going to bring up three, okay? So one of them for sure is Mom Miniatures, M-O-M. Um, they're a small company. They've been putting out a, a couple really good proxy armies for Games Workshop. Um, they do have uh, Orc proxies. There, it's not a full army, but I do kind of like their design, and I do kind of like how their figures are coming out. So I, they're very, they're very old, old hammer kind of feel to them. So I'd say keep an eye on them. They're not necessarily my my top pick, but keep an eye on them. They have some really cool, decent stuff for orcs. Um. The other one is, of course, Highlands Miniatures. For They have the Morid Huns Orcs, and they also have um, Savage Orcs as well. Their stuff, you know, Highland is really good, solid choice for a lot of things. I think their Orcs look a kind of stunted. They don't look as fearsome as I like my Orcs to look. Mm. But I think that their designs are good enough that you don't have to worry about it. Um. I, I think that you get enough stuff in there that you could design a decent orc army for the old world. Uh, um, I love, I, uh, speaking of, I actually love their swamp goblins. The, the, swamp, go the swamp goblins are great too. I, I think yeah. the swamp goblins look awesome. Uh, they, and they have, they have, they have fucking badass movement trays. And they're doing the, the, what's it called? The, like the, what is it called? Like the the more standard goblin, like the the hill goblin or whatever they're oh, called. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They're working on those now, so you can get more of the step goblins. That's I, what they're called, step goblins. I, I really need them to make more tomb king models. Yeah, well, that's part of the problem when you buy an army before they've released all the STLs. Yeah, it's like it's like fuck. It's like I, it's like all the good. Like I got like I got the bulk, but all the all the cool shit I'm waiting on it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I also right really now, like their dwarves. Their dwarves are excellent. Oh, the dwarves are excellent, and I'll get that when we get to the the dwarf part right there. 
Um, let's see, what are they working on right now? They have oh more uh more Empire models for this month. Sorry, Steve. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, they have a uh, sun uh, the new Landschnecks, uh, cavalry horses, all that fun stuff. Uh, also, their their dwarf king on throne is the most badass dwarf king on throne. It's pretty cool. It, it's a, it's fucking dope as shit. He's on like a fucking Viking longboat with uh, torches and shit. It's dope. Very very cool. Uh, I will likely do I will likely do Highland for my uh, dwarf army for Old World. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, they have the. Um... So my next pick would be Eman G, who is the designer that rips off of Total War. Hell so yeah. you could get everything <laughs> for the army and make it look just like Total War from him. His stuff doesn't look like the classic uh, Total War doesn't look like the classic GW orcs, but it's fairly close that you could do some really nice stuff with it. Mm. Um, the it's can you still can you still find those files? Because he's the yeah. guy who got sued, right? Uh, yes, they are fairly easy to find if you put a tiny bit of effort into it. Got it. Does that make sense? So you're technically doing some piratey stuff, but it's available. Got it. The but the, everything is there, of course. It's it's like, do you ever have French fries with Old Bay on it? Yeah, I have actually. Yeah. So it's like that. That's what e G's figures are like. It's like French fries, which is something you're completely used to, but you put Old Bay on there and you're like, no, no, my fries are tasting like I'm in Maryland. And it still tastes <laughs> oh, man, like French these, fries. These, Just, this these, is something different. these fries are tasting wicked different. Yeah, these fries taste wicked different. Um, that's what it's like playing, uh, painting up e G figures. It's like it's like eating French fries with Old Bay on it. For those who don't know, look up Old Bay. It's actually a very delicious sauce in a spice. If, spice. You, if you yeah, live, it's good. if you live in Europe and you never tried Old Bay, give it a try. It it kind of gives you the flavor of the East Coast of of America. It is good. But then my winner uh, of the of the whole thing. So I, I told you I was only going to be a few this time, because like for example, Raging Heroes, which is a company that I really like, their orcs look completely different than like normal orcs. Yes, like a lot of them have like more proportionate style, but there's some cool stuff. Like they do a a, a, a squigoth that's fucking great looking, and I would love to do that squigoth. But the rest of the orcs kind of just look like more humanoid, more human proportions, just muscular, kind of like that D and D style orc as opposed to a Warhammer orc. Mm -hmm. um, Artisan guild is kind of the same way. Like I would print these out and use them for D and D, no problem. But I would not do use them for Games Workshop. Yeah, you'd have, you'd, you'd have to use you'd have to. Well, if you did use them for Games Workshop, you'd have to do an entire army of just them, or your yeah. your style would look really fucking weird. So here is my winner, my my pick for the best orc and goblin proxy that you can get: Avatars of War orcs and goblins. They are GW styled up to badass level. You get yes. everything that you need, and it's fucking awesome. Yeah, Avatars of War is great. But I mean, the Avatars of War, the sculptor is uh, he he's an old old GW sculptor, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, from like way back when. Uh, um, I think he did a little bit of stuff for them. Yeah, I don't think he. I don't know if he actually ever fully did Games Workshop stuff. I thought he. I thought he did, but I'm not sure. I think he, I thought I, th I thought he did some hero sculpts. Some like he, some, he like, may have done some hero sculpts. I know he did a bunch. He you know the metal stuff for the for the um king avatars of war were have been out for decades at this point but he does stls he has everything on there it looks so goddamn cool one of my favorite things is the orc warlord mounted on the wyvern it is unbelievably cool sculpt um and it's balanced unlike a lot of the orcs on wyverns that you would see they just don't balance well. This one is balanced and it looks kick ass. Um, the goblins look fantastic. The goblins look mean and cool. Um, the wolf riders look fantastic. I know everything looks fantastic. Yeah, the you can also get everything. Uh, I want to I want to throw something out real quick. Uh, this is something that's very different than all of these other things you've, you've said about. Um, and this is very important for Avatars of War. You don't have to have a 3D printer to get all the Avatars of War stuff because you can pay. They have an official link on their site. Uh, which is only dash games 
uh, which is which is from my mini factory, but you can get them printed for you for Avatars of War. And like to give you an idea of the price, that badass orc on Wyvern that Joe was just gushing about, which he should because that model is fucking dope, is fifty five dollars USD. So yeah. that's cheap as shit. Yeah, they're troll and like everything is multi part. So if you like, if you want that multi part experience that you used to get with the orcs and goblins, it all comes there. You can you know put them all put them all out there. Um, they have swamp trolls, uh, snotling wagons, like everything. I think the only thing that they don't have is a giant at this point, but I could have missed that. It could be just not in the uh, the orc and goblin section. But they, it's it's they're they're really good. I love avatars of war stuff. Um, I don't recommend it for a ton of things, but for orcs, totally do it. Their, their, beastmen are, their, their beastmen are awesome too. Their beastmen are awesome. Their ogre mercenaries are great. Everything that they do is good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all the all the stuff's good. Yeah, but as I say, I don't recommend them for everything because I think it's a I think a lot of their stuff is over designed in many ways. But for the orcs and goblins, I think it's cool enough that you could get like the goblin king was one of my favorite figures I ever got from them because he's the big fat goblin king. And so yes, that that is the that is the mm, that is the issue with them is that all of their sculpts are character level. Yeah, it's that's why I say they're a little over designed. Yeah, so so they're awesome for your characters, your unit champions and stuff. But man, you do not want to be painting these the figures with this much detail for your rank and file guys. Just saying. Yeah, so I mean, like, I I say if you're gonna go with a proxy army, go with them. It's a good shit. Um, I think let's see what's their uh, what's what do they got on the new uh stl this uh, month i'm gonna see uh have they put up anything for june no they haven't put up anything for june yet currently for this month they have a bunch of uh uh iron the uh not iron jaws yeah iron jaws the 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 heavy plate orcs are yeah up. and they look really great of course, and everything looks great. I, I say it looks great, looks fantastic, looks badass. It's all yes, it's it everything. <laughs> yeah, it they're, is. Drool, they're drool worthy. Everything yes. on this please, for please the check, orcs. please check out Avatars of War. Anyone? Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Right? So for Avatars of War, as opposed to for for orcs and goblins, as opposed to any other of their armies, it's that I think that their design works well for the orcs. Yes, Does that makes sense. They're very very savage and brutal looking as opposed to Highland, which makes them look kind of like doofy, but they're not doofy. They're not like, like, oh, these guys are goofy looking. It's just that in comparison, the Avatars of War stuff looks mean. And that's mm -hmm. what I like about them. Yes. I also really, really like their Savage Orc uh, Warlord, who has the giant sea turtle uh, bone armor. Bone armor. Yeah, I thought, I thought that looks really dope. <laughs> yeah. So check it out um that's my recommendation and you know what they have that no other army has the nasty gets the backstabbers that were released for eighth edition that's true you never see those anywhere no one ever does those and they have them on that, that, that is, i would that love to yeah i would love to see avatars of war do skaven um i think that would they would do a really great job with that um they're undead is really cool looking i wouldn't necessarily call it for my for my for a proxy but you could do some cool stuff with that as well. Mm. Um, some great hero models on that end. But aside from that, um, you said you had uh, something you wanted to talk about, a new game? Oh, yes, Warlord. Uh, Warlord, it's not new. It's uh, Warlord Saga of the Storm. It's an old TCG from the 90s. Warlord uh, of Erwan. <laughs> no, Saga of the Storm. Uh, and it is coming back. It's on Kickstarter right now. Um, it looks really, really dope. And if you know how to play D&D, you already know how to play it. Uh, I highly recommend giving it a shot. The base, the base access level is a hundred bucks for a, the starter, uh, it, or, or all of the starters. You get a display with every starter, um, <clears throat> so it gives you it gives you six decks, uh, and each de each deck also comes with a booster pack, a d20, uh, and it's got your how to play, and it's very very cool. Um, I, I can't I I cannot gush about it enough, but it is one of my favorite card games ever made. Uh, if you if you like D and D, if you like classic fantasy art, and you like work done, speaking of AI art, if you like work that is done by guaranteed human artists by hand, that is all the art in uh, Warlord is done done by that. So 
Uh, you know, that's kind of weird. Like, I'm you mentioned, so this game was popular in the 90s, and this is a new edition, right? This is it's, it's so here's the thing it's not a new edition yet it's a new edition because it is 100 compatible with all of the old cards uh the only difference is they're changing the card pool that will be legal for what is essentially going to be their new standard format okay so like i was just thinking that like there's so many card games that have been discontinued that you think someone would just buy up and reprint right so depending like, on the game yeah yeah, so so for Dungeons and Dragons, for example, like Dungeon Crawl Classics takes a lot of the old D and D dungeon crawls and repackages them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and you know, there's like um, uh, there's Dungeon and Crawl Classics, like they did the 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 nice two two book set of like Raid on the Borderlands. Mm-hmm. I think they did that, or maybe I'm thinking it's another company, but I always think Dungeon Crawl Classics. Yeah. Um, but you could do that with, like, for example, the One Ring card game. Like, how come that hasn't been reprinted at least? Well, the one that's the thing. It's, it's great that you used the One Ring as your example. Is all of the, like, some of the most popular CCGs were licensed. So I would yeah. imagine that, that trying to bring back the, uh, the Lord, uh, Lord of the Middle Earth one, the Lord of the Rings one, that's probably a licensing nightmare. I mean, it, uh, yes, it would be because you'd have to deal with you'd have to buy. First of all, buy it from the mechanics from whatever company originally designed it or whoever owns the rights to those mechanics. Yeah. Then you'd have to like with the art involved with it. Uh, as well. Cro- Iron Crown Enterprises. Iron the, Crown. There you is go. The, is the company that made that. I don't even well, think they I exist did. anymore. No, they don't. So, But you'd have but they're. Oh, well, either A, their mechanics would be in the public domain or B, you'd have to buy the rights to the mechanics from whoever owns them. Then you'd have to get the art, and then you'd have to get the license from you know Middle Earth Enterprises or whoever. I think it would be the Tolkien Estate probably has most of those. Oh, Iron Crown still exists. They're only producing RPG books. Okay, there you go. So yeah, there's some stuff that goes on with that, but I'm I'm sure there's got to be a way of getting around some of that. So like, or like for example, another good one, uh, Netrunner, like the classic '90s Netrunner. Mm-hmm. Like, if, why don't I like? I'm surprised that. Whoever's who owns Netrunner right now is that uh Wizards? Uh, I believe nobody. Owns, I believe Netrunner is a uh is a is a, a meat locker IP right now. I don't think anyone okay. owns it. But it was owned by um Fantasy Flight, right? It was licensed to Fantasy Flight from Fan- Wizards, okay. from Wizards of the Coast. I mean, <laughs> from Wizards of the Coast. Jesus Christ, it's what a tangled web. Yes, but I mean, like <laughs> someone putting out a reprint. Okay, here's a better one, Disney. Uh, it probably has the money that they could. Someone could buy the old Decipher game for Star Wars, like, and they could just put out like a box set of the original Decipher game and just kind of be like, "Hey, here's a throwback to the original Decipher game." It probably does not cost that much money to buy the rights from Decipher at that point. Uh, to yeah, to to do a to do a very limited specific reprint like what you just said, that's going to be a different animal than relaunching a card game so I, yeah uh I'm, I'm just saying like just like a straight up reprint of the original game um putting it out there saying like hey here's a box a blind box so that you could have the feel of opening up packs in the 90s and finding your star destroyer card or whatever your millennium falcon yeah i don't i don't know I, if it's if it's str- to just to strictly actually bring back and just do a reprint like like if you wanted to reprint jim lee's c23 uh like i don't i don't know i and that, that that isn't that is an interesting i don't think anyone's ever done that yeah or, or like games workshop just like saying like hey remember the old saber tooth horse heresy game here's a reprint have fun with it <laughs> yeah i don't know that's that's that that is interesting i it's it, 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 honestly my guess is probably no one's doing it because they probably don't think there's any money in it no, and that that's exactly right. And that's why it's like you have to find something that really hits that nostalgia button like cuz like perfect example you said Star Wars, like the Star Wars Cyber game, there's a there's a a brand new absolute megaton smash hit Star Wars card game that you can play and buy right now. So, you Is know, it really that big of a hit? Oh, it's a it's a giant hit. It's a smash. It's a it's a smash success. It's one of the most successful card games in years. Oh really? Wow, I had no idea on that. Yeah, the Star the Star Wars CCG is huge. It's it's a finger it's, on the pulse, Steve. We have our fingers <laughs> on the pulse. I mean, I do. I just said I, I knew it's it. true. <laughs> you would know. You know. Um, 
you know that better than than most people. I, I got I got the I got the vibe check generally pretty pretty well down. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's very very popular. Um, what it makes sense. I mean, the, the art is really good. Uh, it's actually using art, uh, which is awesome. Um, the gameplay is fast and fun. I mean, if if it wasn't Star Wars, I'd play it. Yeah, I mean, because do that original. I I have such fond memories of the original Decipher game, and I've talked about it on this cast before. Oh, yeah, it's like absolutely. one of my it's like all the expansions were so fantastic i loved everything about it bro, um, bro i still had the, the cloud city boba fett sticker is still stuck on a on a wall in this house <laughs> um by the way they still have world champions for playing the original decipher game um even 2020 the covid year done online was uh was was won by an american usa usa i think they use they i think they use the updated fan stuff for because I, yeah, I, I know star trek is like star trek has there's yeah, a star trek has a really good community that still does a lot of that yeah stuff. i th i thought there was the same thing for star wars but i might be wrong but, but like star trek the decipher one like they have a current edition like they keep it they keep updating uh for the star trek one like i'd like the, the star trek decipher players are crazy like they they fucking they play the shit out of that game it's um, a it's a it's a popular um it's still a a super popular system for playing. Yep, and it's still the be it's still the best uh Star Trek role playing game system. Uh the 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 Star Trek role playing game by Decipher is still the best one. Not even close. Yeah. I don't care what anyone uh -oh. says. I mean the I mean and I don't get me wrong, I love Modiphius, but oh my god, the Modiphius Star Trek game is the fucking god, it's the pits. <laughs> it's is it, like is it that bad? So if you are like a ridiculous star trek nerd and you are really into star trek it's awesome but the problem is think of what i just said and try to make a full tabletop rpg group meet that all meets that criteria yeah i can see that that's like, the problem with it is it is not friendly to people who are not very very familiar with star trek I'm looking like, at this Star Wars game right now that you that you're talking about the new one Star Wars Unlimited is that the one yeah, you're talking about Star Wars Unlimited that's it mm -hmm. oh, this looks miserable um oh and I found out I, I know I know exactly what your issue with the orcs for mid or for mid it looks a round. lot like the decipher game now that I'm looking at it uh yeah it's a it's a 1v1 there's a there's a dark side light side player um the the difference is it's it's a it's a duel do they use um, attrition <laughs> no, there's 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 no attrition, but there's there's no attrition. Yeah, I, I, uh, Son of Skywalker, uh, four strains. That's fifteen attrition. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no. So what the the unlimited is is you have a champion, you have a like character. So the idea is that it's or uh, the elevator pitch is it is a fight between two specific Star Wars characters supported by additional Star Wars characters and events. Yeah, I, um, uh, yeah, I get that. It just the 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 card design looks very, very like the very much like the cipher, which I think is a conscious move on their part. Oh yeah, yeah, they have the same kind of like in the middle. They have like the same kind of words like underworld, Wookie, yeah, that kind of stuff. Exactly, it looks so much like the decipher one in many, many of the aspects. I can I can see where you're coming from on that one for sure. Yeah, yeah, I can see it um so uh we're getting towards the end here i just have a couple other things um i've heard that the new D, D vecna book is very very good yes um, yeah the D, D vecna book is awesome yeah it's I've, I've heard that that is like the best thing that they've put out in years at this point and that's interesting to me i might pick that book up and uh i've heard that um rumor that the new uh D, D, you know, D, D one or whatever they're calling you're gonna call this new one, or just Dungeons and Dragons edition is gonna be dropping. Um I I yeah, so so check this out. So yeah. so they're not so Dungeons and Dragons, it is not sixth edition. They are not calling it sixth edition. No, they're, they're not even not calling, calling it edition. They're not they're not even calling it one. One specifically is the app. Beta. It's the app. So oh, the what, app. Okay. yes, one is the app. So what they are doing is they're releasing a uh, player's handbook, dungeon master's guide, and monster manual. And what they yep. are what they are titling them is and and it, it, it's kind of dumb, but it's 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 very, it's it's dumb, but it's also genius. It is going to be called the dungeon master's guide 2024, the player's handbook guide, player's handbook 2024, the yeah. monster manual 2024, and the other ones that still currently exist are going to have 2014 added to them. So you're going to be able to, so you're still going to be able to buy player's handbook 2014. 
some people buy Player's Handbook 2014. You can buy all, all three books. Yep. Uh, no, no, it's 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 genius. It's it's fucking genius yeah. because it's fucking genius. Uh, and I'll tell you why it's fucking genius because they're cashing in on habits of gamers. So yes. they're releasing they're cashing in on anger of gamers too. Right. They're, they're and what they're doing is they're they're releasing the most gentle new edition possible, which means they're going to fucking print money because yeah. the Player's Handbook 2024 is going to be a better, superior release to the Player's Handbook 2024 2014. Simple. It's just it's just simple. There's 10 years of development into the book. Like it's going to be a better value. It's going to have more content. It's going to have better content. It's going to have more up-to-date content. It's going to be very streamlined. Because if you think about it, like how much of the just the original player's handbook are people using? Way less than they think, but their mental mindset is like, I don't want all of my books to go bad. So what yeah. you do is you just release new better books. And slowly over time, these are going to become the books that everyone wants. And they're going to stop wanting the 2014 Player's Handbook. And then once people stop caring about the 2014 books, you say, hey, last call, everyone. These books are going to go away now. And everyone will be like, oh, that's fine. We already all, we've already all bought the new books. Yeah. I, I mean, I just, And that's I why they're it. not calling a sixth edition. That's why they're not discontinuing any books. That's why they're doing it this way. Yeah, I just – I see it as as like in my dealing with – newer D and D players who have never played before. Um, like this is their first experience playing with D and D or like any game for that matter, where they're just like, I, why can't we just play with the old edition? Why yes. do we have to have a new edition? It's I, like, they, listen, they don't understand how it works. Listen here, child. <laughs> but that's okay. Because, because yeah. now, because now wizards is doing it all. They're doing, they're literally doing everything. They're keeping the edition. Like they're keeping the current edition and making a new edition at the same time. Yeah, so yep. that's, that's, it's genius. So the um yeah they're dropping in uh it's which is also weird is they're not dropping all three at the same time they're doing a staggered release with the handbook coming out first in September the dungeon master's guide in November and then the monster manual gets updated in February so it's like it's not like month 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 it's like every two months you're gonna get the new um. Yep. You're getting a new version of this book. It's because it's just the 2024 editions, Joe. That's that, and that's and that that they they have found a way to keep the Dungeons and Dragons as a perpetual motion machine. Because now, when they re, when they do the new Player's Handbook, they can just do Player's Handbook 2033. Like yeah. they 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 never need to they never need to do. Imagine never going through an edition shift. Like that's what's going to happen. That that is the change of Dungeons and Dragons. They're changing it to become more of like a uh a lifestyle product instead of these are editions because i mean yeah like we, we joke about how like you know people like grognard out and they only play third but like there's legitimately people who still only play third edition dungeons and dragons because they just refused to change they're like i'm yeah, not buying I, the new edition well but i can they'll see buy that. new third edition books yeah i i see that more as a um what's it called i i see that as more of dude like our campaign has just been going since 1996 like you uh, or 1999 we were not going to stop playing third edition so um like this is just the edition that we play with because we're on the same campaign with the same characters that totally makes sense to me but yeah. if starting up a new game i would not start up a new game in third edition unless it's with the same players who have been playing since 1999 yeah yeah no i and i, and I get it it's it's so it's just it's just a weird thing it's just it's and with RPGs, it's a lot it's a lot different than um, yeah. TCGs or minis games because if you refuse to buy the new TCG stuff, that's fine. If you want to keep playing, sure, you're just gonna get fucking destroyed. Like you'll never win. Like eventually, at some point, your deck will just not work anymore because it will not be as good as the newer cards, and you will just lose. So you will either naturally be phased out because your stuff isn't good enough anymore. Or you will be forced to buy new cards. With role playing games, that doesn't apply, obviously. No. Um, and one thing I just wanted to add on Vecna is that one of the things that I I'm, I was like, wow, it actually it's a full campaign that will take you from levels one to twenty with the characters, um, and it's supposedly just like pure D and D um, uh, member berries. Yes. So if you like D and D or like you read the books in the nineties, like the the you know all the Dritz books or um, any of the other like all those other trashy books that came out in the eighties and nineties on with that take place in the Forgotten Realms, you're gonna love the campaign because it's gonna bring up all those things and you're gonna be like, 
Remember Elminster? There's Elminster. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's going to have all that stuff, which is not saying that I wouldn't want to play it because I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of those novels. So I never really read them too much. I mean, I read the Dritz books. That's about it. That's all I've ever read. Hey, I never I, I, I'm trying to think if I ever read any specific Dungeons and Dragons fiction. I don't think I ever have. Did you never read the Dritz books? No, I, I, oh, I, wow. I, I'm not going to read a fucking 20 page sword fight. I am. I'm out. Oh, okay, you know, I, I'll, I'll give the Dritz books. They're they're fine. It's it's. You know, it's it's whatever. It's it's the the same guy who killed Chewbacca, so you can enjoy that. Yeah, it's mostly um, like I, I, I it's I don't know. I don't have like a I, I I have a disdain for Dritz because of the player base, not because of Dritz himself. Just and just the character's popularity, like kind of like fucked over Dark Elves as like a thing. Um, but in the end, it's mostly just kind of like a shrug, you know. Yeah, I mean that's kind of it. And yes, he did kind of ruin it because everybody wants to play Dritz is is basically what it comes down to. Right. He became the st- like he was supposed to be a maverick, but he became the standard model of like what a dark elf is. It's really stupid. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Steve. He he became the standard to what a dark elf player is, yes. as opposed to the outlier that he should be. Right. He's supposed to be a maverick. That's the whole. That's the whole reason he's a notable dark elf. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. I mean. He, but I, it, the books are fine. Whatever. It's it, it is standard nineteen late eighties, early nineties fantasy novel, which I love because I love reading trash. But we still all have to understand it's trash. Yes. You know, like you can love you, trash. That's fine. You, I love trash. I know. I love trash too. But I'm just awesome. saying, it's like even though you love trash, you still have to admit that it is trash. But it, but I love it, so it's awesome. See, that's the yes. thing you don't understand. That's the thing you understand. There's 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 an overriding principle. Yeah. It becomes awesome because I like it. Yeah, it's like I like the Marvel movies. The vast majority of them are trash. I found that I found that it was enjoyable up to uh, in um, Endgame. That was where I stopped. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. It's enjoyable. But Thor is a trash movie. If you it's, like trash, it's got one good bit, which it's got one really good bit, yeah. which is when he's in the cafe and he's drinking and he just smashes the cup and he's like, I like it. I, another. That that bit's great. Yes. But even though you like it, you still have to admit it's trash. Same thing with Star Wars Episode 1. It's a trash movie. I don't like it, but you are allowed to like it. You're allowed to like it. But you ha- you can't like it without admitting that it's trash, though. That's the thing. If you try to admit that it's more than trash, I'm going to have to. Ha- we're going to have to have a, a little bit of a discussion. I, I don't oh. like the Thor. I don't like the Thor movie. To be fair, I, I don't think yeah. it's a good movie. I don't think it's good or likable. <laughs> but that's always what it comes down to. That's my feeling. Is is you're allowed to like anything that you want, but you got to admit it's bad if it's bad. <laughs> you can admit it's bad, and you can admit that you love it. And there's nothing wrong with admitting that it, you love something that's bad. So. Anyway, uh, you could go to. I think that's about it, right? Do we have anything else? Uh, We've yeah, gone for a while now, so yeah, this is a very, very mega long episode. Yes, so you could go to the Game Classy Facebook page. It's the best way to find the link to the Game Classy Discord. The Discord is where we have all of our fun discussions with multiple Discord boards. Um, we have uh, we talk about stupid stuff, post pictures, um, you know, whatever else you do on a on a Discord board. Um, I, yeah. I don't know what else you would have on a Discord board besides that. Voice chat? We don't do voice chat, though. No, not really. No. I, I would love to. So my, so this, you know, how we do this podcast right now, I do have a live streaming option for it. Oh, like, a, a, and we could do like, a, we could do a live stream. Uh, like, so if we're recording right now, I could just say, hey, live stream's going up and I could put it on the Discord so that they can listen while we're talking. Oh, that's kind of cool. I was thinking about maybe doing that. I don't know. We could, and we could, you know, we could even have a, we could actually have a, uh, we, if we could do, if we could live stream, we could actually throw a, we can have a live react channel that we can lock when we're not streaming. And then when we are streaming, we can unlock it. And then people you, can comment while we're streaming. This is the, the, okay. So I like your idea. I have no idea what any of those words mean or how they would work. So that's the difference. <laughs> no problem. I can make that, I can make that happen. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll check into it. We'll see how that would work out. Um, if you want to see if you want to see more of my stuff, you can go to the game uh, game class at Game Classy Joe on Instagram. That's where I put up all posts of all my stuff. Put up, uh, you know, just whatever I'm working on. So right now I'm working on Cowboys. Dun, 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 I told you that was not the last one. I I know I said it was the last one. And if you want more of Steve's stuff, you could look at uh, him on Blue Sky at Command Throw on Blue Sky. 
It's true. Um, so Steve, wait. Oh, if you want to, we also have the podcast up on iTunes and we have it up on the Twitters. We have it up on, on Spotify now. So we are on Spotify. Get our numbers up so we can get those sweet, sweet scents. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Steve, until next time. New York City. Later. Game Classy. <laughs> <laughs>